Okay guys, so we last left off, we had this um, sort of crazy looking chart. Now, I want to point out that it does actually work. <laughs> um, although working in this case is a, is a matter of, uh, it's sort of a matter of uh, interpretation, right? Um, we can see that, um, yes, our data is there. Yes, there's technically a bar chart being created, but there's, there's some serious problems with this. And, uh, and the biggest problem, of course, is that we haven't actually told our, um, we haven't actually told our uh, page anything about how to size this data. Uh, sorry, just how to size this chart. If you recall, right, we just kind of stuck a div on the page and then said, great, go, go draw this chart in there, Google, yay. Um, right, that's not sufficient. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a CSS page because we want to be, you know, sort of controlling the style of this chart. Now in this case, because we're just, at the moment, we're just working with a single element. And so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a file, new from template, CSS. Um, it always does this body tag and I always never know whether to include it or not. But um, what I can do here is I can just say, all right, well, now remember we can write classes or we can target things by ID. Um, I leave it to you guys in this case which one you prefer to do. Uh, I'm just going to do guardian bar by ID right now because I, I want to point out a couple of other things um, in the meantime. And so now I'm going to call this, let's say, G charts CSS. Right? And of course, what I'm going to do is set a width and a height, which seems to be the most important element right now. So I'm going to say 500 pixels, and um, I'm going to give it a height of you know, 600 pixels for now. Right? We'll, we'll look more at sort of these specific layout elements in a bit. But so we have this width and this height. Um, and uh, yeah, now we have, obviously have to include that CSS, that style sheet, in our. Um, head tag. So I'm going to go ahead and say link rel equals style sheet. Yes, and it always does that. It fills in the extra part and kind of messes it up. So I'm not going to use that anymore. And href, right, slightly different, but it does know that I want a CSS style sheet. And I close this tag and hopefully um, I will now see this element um, added. So I should at least see, got to upload my CSS, of course, and also uh, re-upload my HTML page. Say yes, great. And if I reload here, do, 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 do. see how long this is taking? It really does take a while sometimes. So now we're getting a little bit better. Now there's something I want to point out, which I may or may not have occurred to you guys at this point, right? Which is that um, these bars are blue, <laughs> right? Um, and we see some sort of like, we see some other stuff going on here. We see that there's this key here, but the key is kind of cut off and it's staggering these things weirdly and stuff, okay? So what I want to point out is that this is the very, very basics. Um, and we can use our CSS, um, and I'm going to show you a trick right now, actually. So if I do my classic little, come on, where are you, guy? Should be able to do my inspect element. Okay, so one of the things that I'm going to be able to do, if we see here, div ID guardian bar. So we're in the normally we're in the console window, right? But now we're in this uh, this elements window. You see how it's showing? It it actually because. Gosh, we love Chrome, right? See how it's showing me what the width and height are? Here is a sneaky little trick. I can actually go in here and edit these values. And I should be able to see how they change the layout, although actually perhaps that won't, yeah, this won't work with this. Sorry. Normally that does work. Um, actually, if we look at our, um, if we look at our example from last week, this is a better one. Um, not Google, not Google, Columbia. That's where we are. Um, sometimes maybe Columbia being slow too. Okay, if we look at this, right? This is your um, this is your current or uh, last week's assignment. Uh, I can go here and go inspect element, and I can do something really fun because I have this matched CSS rules. So what if I'm like, ugh, I really I want this to be black. Actually, I want to see what it looks like with a gray. See what's happening here? It's actually changing. It's live changing these uh, these rules, right? I can say, you know what? Um, can actually use my arrow keys, right, to start making changes to this. If you see this decrementing here, 
Um, I'm actually just holding down my down arrow and it's scrolling through all of the possible colors. Um, really kind of fun stuff that, that you can do here and actually really a time saver because of course many times it's hard to sort of picture in our heads what CSS is going to look like. So when we create these classes and, um, and style rules we can use them as a way we can say okay well, what happens if I increase the, you know, what if I increase the margin, what happens? All of this stuff. Um, we can actually even add style rules here. Um, now these won't stay, right? They don't, we're not actually editing our CSS file here, but what they can do, I could say padding, um, let's call this three pixels, right? I'm not, um, I'm not actually editing my CSS here, right? This is only exists in the page. When I reload this page, it's all going to disappear. But uh, I can copy and paste from here any changes that I make and actually put them into my proper CSS file and, and have those changes be permanent. So really handy way to just experiment and play around with, um, with the look and feel of things and really kind of tweak them into place. Now, as we just saw before, um, doesn't work so well with the Google visualizations thing. And this is, you know, sort of the boon and the, and the risk of using these libraries, or I shouldn't say risk, it's, it's a trade-off. Right, um, we get an automatic bar chart with interactive bars, which is pretty awesome. Um, you know, and it kind of does some reasonably smart stuff with rollovers and things like that. On the flip side, it means that we can't just use the CSS uh, that's available on the rest of the page to do the styling. And um, if you if we look back at our um, if you look back at our code, uh, one of the things you may notice is that we had this options parameter. Right, I just kind of glossed over this at the time, but as we look into this, right, again, we see JSON objects of various uh, sort of levels and, and uh, levels of specification and style. And we can see, ah, oh, company performance, hmm, interesting. That does seem to correspond if I uh, look at it with, whoops, with something on my page, which is the title of my chart. Um, so I could say, actually, state population, right? We see that the title it left was year, and we're going to actually call this states. Um, they have this as red. I'm going to put mine in as blue just to sort of see that what the change does. So we don't get quite the same level of, we don't get quite the speed of feedback with this because we actually have to change our code in order to see how it affects the chart. Um, on the other hand, um, we have some nice documentation available. Um, so there we go, state population, states, right? Um, we have there's exhaustive documentation of all of the quote-unquote options, right, that we can pass to our chart to customize all of these elements. And indeed, if I did change the, um, I mean, the overall size of the chart is determined by CSS. So if I came back into my CSS here and I said, you know what, this really ought to be bigger, um, I can go ahead and make this 800 pixels high, which is a pretty high chart, um, right, and I can say, you know, make it 700 pixels wide, and let's see what happens there. Come back. Reloading all the time, right? And now we're starting to see something that looks a little bit, a little bit more reasonable. Um, so, again, this is just to introduce you guys to these elements. But you see, we've gotten pretty quickly to something that's actually interactive. And so, from here on out, what we're going to be doing is working with this API, um, reading the documentation. Um, so, this is the data table documentation from bar chart. We're going to see. Um, I mean, the beauty part of this is that the configuration options that we see here, okay, this is part of your reading, is looking at, um, is reading through some of the some of the options that you have here, right? So we have things like background color for the chart, background color stroke, stroke width, right? All of those details that we saw uh, talked about in the Wall Street Journal reading, right? We can we can really manipulate this and we can really customize it to be uh, to be what we want and. Um, you know, it's gonna, it, it takes a little bit of experimentation kind of figuring out how to do all this stuff. But for example, if we look at colors, colors is a really important element of our, uh, of our chart. And so what we see is, um, it says an array of strings where each element is an HTML color string, for example, colors red, right? So let's give this a shot. And this does take a little playing around. I'm not sure I'm gonna get this off. Oops. I'm not sure I'm gonna get this right off the bat here. Um, Uh, let's try this. So you see text title color. So I'm going to go ahead and say, what if I put in, oops, where is my, where's my reference? Colors, colon, red. Mm 
Okay, and it said it wanted an array, so let's try it. And I need a comma because, of course, this is an object, right? Title, colors, the axis. Okay. Don't know. Let's see what happens. Ta-da! Okay, so that's it for this week. Um, this is just to, again, sort of we're building on this idea of making sure that we load things in, in order on the page, um, making sure that everything that we need is available before we start trying to work with it, right? So we don't get into any sort of weird, crazy synchronicity problems. Um, and actually generating a data table and then a chart. And, um, and taking a look at the ways that this chart can be customized. And so from here on out, we're going to really be focusing on that customization, um, looking at you know, how to really be detailed in making choices about the design, the layout, the labeling, all of that stuff that we've discussed as being really so important to actually understanding what, what is being communicated with a visualization. So we'll work bar charts for a while. You'll see that these, um, that these mechanisms actually scale out to all the other kinds of Google visualizations and can really give you uh, quite a nice, uh, robust uh, set of tools for, for making a variety of, of visualizations. So that's all for now. Um, I will see you guys next week.